that Lord thou knowest best and I want to be a blessing Lord I just pray today uh, just speak through me and uh, Lord help me to feed your church uh, Lord encourage your people strengthen them guide them Lord Jesus I need your help this morning and that we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus name Amen whether you realize it or not this morning as we've gathered together in the house of the Lord every one of us is a seeker in some way um, I've seen it this week over and over and over and over again people are seeking uh, they're looking they're searching uh, and in some cases they don't even know what they're searching for but they're just searching maybe you're here this morning and you're seeking for some guidance maybe you're seeking for some financial help or seeking for some strength or some assurance in some area of your life maybe seeking peace or seeking some fellowship maybe seeking a, uh, some forgiveness this morning maybe you're seeking a new start maybe you're seeking a purpose in life or a reason to keep going a reason to live maybe this morning you're just seeking a family you're just seeking to feel like you're a part of something special but in Isaiah 55 and in verse number 1 it says Ho, everyone that thirsteth What's the next word? Come. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come. You see this morning God is calling out today to a society, to the whole world. God says, come. Come society of seekers. I am offering to fill your need. He says to everybody, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, everyone that is seeking, come come ye to the waters he's saying listen I can fulfill that need of guidance that need of help financial or physical that need of assurance that need of peace fellowship forgiveness a new start he says ho 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 everyone that thirsteth come come but look at verse number two in the same chapter it says wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread he says, listen, and your labor for that which satisfies not. You see, there are many that are looking into the ways of the world and looking to the world's philosophy to try to fill that need, and it cannot. It cannot fill or meet that need. Many are seeking the fullness in the things uh, that, that, that the promises of man and the world, but unfortunately they are seeking that fullness in an empty cup. This, this world, this world will spend you up and leave you bankrupt. Amen. It has nothing truly to offer. The more we feast on the emptiness of the world, the more indifferent we become as a people, the more unhappy, the more selfish, self-centered, uncaring, uncompassionate we are. Without realizing it, we become just as empty as the world we live in. Amen. We're seeking. Ho, everyone that thirsteth. Ho, everyone that's seeking. Come ye to the waters. The Lord has a, re a well that never runs dry. He has a place. He is able this morning to sustain you, to fill you up. Matthew 5 and verse 6, it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The Lord can fill your cup. The Lord can fill you up. And notice in this passage in Matthew 5, blessed or happy are they which do. And then he lists hunger and thirst, the two necessary things that you and I need to survive. And then he puts in that same verse, righteousness. Righteousness. And oh, how we need to seek that which is right this morning. So today, let's look at some things today about the seeker. Now let's look here first of all in Isaiah 55 and notice verse 6. The verse that I read uh, with you again a moment ago. Isaiah 55, 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. The first thing I see this morning is our pursuit. 
as a seeker, let's look about our let's look at our pursuit this morning. It's a heartfelt seeking. It's the seeking of our hearts. If, the, if, if for the unsaved, it's the seeking to be saved, to seek into that place of coming to know the the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as your Savior. For in Jeremiah seventeen nine, it says, "The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it?" But the Bible says in verse 10 of that same chapter, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Now, I don't know about you this morning, but that's a sobering verse for me. That's a sobering verse. Because the Lord says, listen, you don't know your heart, but I know your heart. Now, listen. I, I, I didn't know. I don't know all about my heart, but I knew before Christ, I knew that my heart was not good. I knew there were some dirty things about my heart. And uh, listen, God says in this verse 10 here, He says, I'm going to give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Hey, listen, I didn't want to, I didn't want to pay for the doings of my heart. Amen. I, didn't want to, I, didn't, I didn't want to have to cash in on the corruptness of my heart. But the Lord knows my heart. And this morning, if you're here and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, if there's never been a time when you've settled it assuredly in your heart, you can do that this morning. And it's imperative that you do that. Why? Because, listen to me, there's a righteous, holy God that will one day give you the fruit according to your doings. Amen. The Bible says over in Romans chapter 10, over in Romans chapter 10 this morning, the Word of God says this. It says in Romans 10 verse 9 that if thou shalt confess, that is if you come to the green terms with God, and speak the same as God. Well, what is that? That, yeah, God, my heart's deceitful. Jeremiah 17, 9, my heart's deceitful, God. It's desperately wicked, God. And I acknowledge that. I confess that before you, God. And God, you know my heart. And God, I'm tired of eating the old rotten fruit of my doings. And God says, listen, if you come to that place and you get tired of that old rotten fruit, of your doings, of eating that old rotten fruit, He says, listen, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine, what's the next word, church? Heart. 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 If you believe in thine heart, it's not a head knowledge, it's a heart knowledge. It's a heart transformation. Somebody needs a heart transplant this morning. Amen. And God says, listen, I can meet that need. I can fulfill that need. I can give you a new heart. Yes. A new heart. And shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Hey, listen. You, can, you don't have to live in doubt, fear, or question. You can know this morning Amen. that you are one of the children of God. And you don't have to eat of the doings of your heart any longer. You can, because God will give you a new heart. A new heart. And the Bible says, First 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This morning, is there somebody today that, oh, you've been kind of wondering, you know, I don't know, I kind of want to believe in my heart, but I'm just not really sure. Hey, listen, this morning, why don't you let your heart pursue that which is right? Blessed or happy are they which do hunger and thirst after that which is right, righteousness. And if you're lost this morning, then your heart is desperately wicked. It's deceiving you in believing that, oh, there really is no God. Oh, there really is no heaven or hell. Oh, there really is, uh, there really is no saving grace. Oh, this morning, don't let your heart deceive you. Don't remain desperately wicked. Let Jesus Christ, who knows your heart, give you a new one this morning. Save your soul and give you a home in heaven. But not only this morning, does there need to be a pursuit of the lost to be saved, but there needs to be a, a, a seeking this morning, a pursuit of the saved seeking the Savior. You know this morning that there are many of the people of God seeking everything but the Savior. If we're not careful, we can get so busy and seeking things uh, and, and, and forget that, listen, the Lord is among us and wants us to seek Him with our life. Jeremiah 29, 
And in verse 13, the Bible says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Deuteronomy 4, and in verse 29, the Bible says, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Listen this morning, it's time that the people of God, those of us that know the Lord as our personal Savior, get back to the place where we are seeking Him. We seek the wisdom of, of others. We seek uh, a, a lot of things in life. But we need to get back to Christ, our priority, and seeking the Lord Jesus Christ again. It's time that the young people uh, not worry about and seeking all the time who's going to be their next Who's going to be the next girlfriend or boyfriend or, or you know, or, 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 or seeking out uh, things like that. Hey, listen, that's all in God's timing. We need to get back to where our young people are seeking Him again. Seeking the Lord again. We need to stop seeking uh, a word about careers and start seeking the one who's the opener of, of opportunity. Seeking Him. Seeking God. Listen, God knows who you are and God is able to, uh, to, to bring whatever employment is needed. We just need to seek Him again. Seeking Amen. the Lord. Amen. Seeking God. How's our pursuit this morning? How's our searching? Are we seeking Him? Are we seeking what He could do or are we seeking Him? Are we worried about this area or that area of our life or are we trusting and seeking Him? He'll take care of it. Amen. In Psalm 38. Uh, look here with me in Psalm 38 for just a moment. In Psalm 38, and I want you to notice with me in verse 10. The Bible says, My heart panteth, and my strength faileth me. Have you ever been there? He says, As for the light of mine eyes, it, is all, it, is, it also is gone from me. My lovers and my friends, they stand aloof. From my from my my sore and my kinsmen stand afar off. They also that seek after my life lay snares for me, and they that seek my hurt they speak mischievous things and they imagine deceits all the day long. Have you ever been there? But I, as a deaf man, heard not, and I was as a dumb man that openeth not his mouth. Thus I was as a man that heareth not, and whose mouth are no reproofs. Verse 15, For in thee, O Lord, do I hope thou wilt hear, O Lord, my God. So the psalmist here, David, says, listen, there's all kinds of these things going on surrounding, encompassing me. There's all kind of pressure that I'm feeling. But he says, listen, in thee, O Lord, do I hope. In thee, O Lord, do I seek. In thee, O Lord, do I rest upon. I want you to notice uh, Psalm 40 with me for just a moment. In Psalm 40. I love Psalm 40, especially verse 5. But let's start at verse 1. The Bible says in Psalm 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me and heard my cry. Here again, Sunday school class, we were talking about prayer and how that God hears the prayers of His children. Aren't you glad this morning? And David says, listen... Uh, he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He listened to my prayer. Verse 2. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock. Amen. And established my goings. Hey, listen, we know this morning that the chief cornerstone, the rock, is Jesus Christ. And this morning, he's the solid rock we're standing on. Amen. Amen. He's Christ, the solid rock. And we're standing upon him this morning. We're seeking him this morning. Verse 3. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. David is saying, listen, he says, listen, happy is the one that makes the Lord his trust. He's relying upon him. He's seeking 
seeking Him. He's looking unto Him. Look at verse 5. For many, O Lord my God, are thy wondrous works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which thou art to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in the order unto thee. For if I would declare and to speak of Him, of them, they are more than can be numbered. Listen this morning. Why would we not seek Him when He is of uh, many multiplied blessings and thoughts uh, works marvelous before us and to us this morning. Why would we not seek Him this morning? Amen. We are to seek Him. It's our pursuit this morning to seek Him. Now I know when we came to church this morning, I know, praise the Lord, but listen, let's make sure that we're seeking Him during the week as well. Every day, seek ye the Lord. Seek ye the Lord. Seek Him. Seek Him. Seek Him in your, uh, seek him in your uh, relationships. Seek Him in your uh, child rearing. Seek Him in your marriage. Seek Him in your financial uh, situation. Seek Him in your health situation. Listen, be careful for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be known to God. Seek Him in every area of your life. Seek ye the Lord. Amen. We seek Google. And Facebook and Twitter. If we sought God as much as we sought those three things, how much better would our life be? Amen. Seek Him. Seek Him. But not only was this a uh, the, the seeking here that it was a heartfelt seeking and a seeking for the uh, it was a pursuit of the heart uh, for salvation or the heart uh, to draw closer to God but a scriptural seeking you know the Bible says in John chapter 1 in John chapter number 1 and in, in verse number 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God Hey, listen, 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman, did not be ashamed to rightly dividing the word of truth. Listen, we find God through His word. Amen. We find the Lord through His word. And so you and I seek Him through the Scriptures. This morning, are you seeking His forgiveness? Are you seeking forgiveness or, or, or the feeling that you've been forgiven this morning? Seek the Scriptures. We were just there in Isaiah, but uh, you don't need to turn that back there, but in, in Isaiah 55, we were just there in Isaiah 55 and verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let it return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God. He, for he will abundantly pardon. There's more, listen, there's more grace available for, for you today. Find His forgiveness for you. Seek His Word for control. You know, this is a big one. Let's go over here to Galatians. Let's look at this together. Galatians chapter 5. Maybe this is not a big one for you, but this is a big one for me. Self-control. Self-control. You know, this world wants to see if they can push your button. It wants to see if they can get you to the place to where you'll do everything but what God wants you to do. If they can get you to act and talk and be just as miserable as they are, they'll be happy. Because our faith rubs them wrong. Now let's look at this verse right here. Galatians 5. And look with me at verse 24. And they that are Christ, that's you and I this morning that know the Lord. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections, the passions, and the lusts. Verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. You know, when we're seeking self-control, when we get to that place where we feel like, man, I am ready to just pounce. Or I'm ready to just give them a piece of my mind. Or I'm ready to just walk off. Or I'm ready to whatever. Listen, when you get to that place when you're going to start acting like the emptiness of the world, 
Go back to Galatians 5. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us take a step the way Jesus would have took a step. You know, what did Jesus, what steps did Jesus take? What steps did he take with the Pharisees and the Sadducees? What steps did he take uh, with those uh, who tried to catch him at his words and twist them? What, how did he act? Listen, he's our example. Let us walk. And that's not easy to say, I know, or practice. It's easier to say than it is to practice. But, let's, but listen this morning, let's seek him. Lord, this is happening right now in my life. And God, this is what I want to do. Lord, show me in the scriptures how I'm to handle this situation. You know, the Bible says if you have an alt with a brother, that you ought to go to the brother. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Yep. The scriptures teach us how to handle the situations of life. Yep. But, but a lot of times we'll seek the counsel of, of somebody that's in the world. Well, man, I just went over there and told them, let them, let them have it. But is that how the Lord would have let, let, wanted you to handle it? We need the Lord. We need to seek Him. We need to seek Him in our life. We need to seek Him in the Scriptures. We need to seek Him when we doubt. When, we, when you and I begin to doubt and question and wonder, we need to seek Him. You know, the Bible says uh, in Hebrews 11, 1, but without faith it's impossible to please Him. Amen. For he that comes to God must believe that He is. And that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So let's seek Him this morning. Let's seek Jesus. Let's seek Him when we have these fears and doubts that plague our hearts and minds. 2 Timothy 1 says, God's not given us the spirit of fear, Amen. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. So this morning, if we feel afraid, if we feel doubtful about some things, hey, listen, have we prayed about it? Have we taken it to God? Have we, have we sought Him in the Scriptures? Have we sought Him in our prayer call? Have we sought Him? Lord, what will thou have me to do? And then let me just say this. Let me throw this in. When he reveals it to us, do it. Amen? Amen. When God reveals after we've sought him and he says, this is what we do, then, then we don't have a debate with God. But now, God, I don't think that will work with this person. No, it's not a debate. It, 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 it's This is what the Lord says, and then we do it. We seek Him. And maybe this morning in scripturally seeking Him, we seek Him for forgiveness. We seek Him maybe for self-control. We seek Him for the fears and doubts that plague in our hearts and minds. Maybe we need to seek Him for stubbornness. Maybe there's some stubbornness and we need to seek Him out and about this thing and say, Lord, help me in this area of my life. You know, in Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6. And in verse number 13, the Bible says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves to God, unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members, hey, that is your body, your body that wants to be stubborn, as instruments of righteousness unto God. Are your ears stubborn? Is your tongue stubborn? Is your hand stubborn? I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to listen to this. Hey, listen this morning. Don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Let the Word of God seek it out. Seek Him through the Scriptures and let it help you. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Let the Scriptures help you this morning. Seek Him. Seek Him in the Scriptures. Hebrews chapter 10. Turn there if you'd like to, but in Hebrews chapter 10, look at this Scripture here in verse 22. Hebrews 10, verse 22. The Bible says, let us draw near with a true heart 
in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. And here it is. This is my favorite part. For he is faithful that promised. Thankful for that this morning. For he is faithful, the Bible says, that promised. And, and, and this morning we serve a faithful God. And he's, I'm glad he's more faithful than I am. <laughs> he's a faithful God. And this morning, you and I, we need to seek him. Seek him in the scriptures. His word will guide and help us in life. So this morning, our pursuit. Our pursuit this morning. If we're saved, we're seeking our Savior. We're getting back to the place where we're seeking our God we're seeking Him with our whole hearts. Where we want Him to guide in our life. Rather than worrying and seeking out how everything is going to work out, we just seek the one who can work it out. Without, If you're lost this morning, you're not sure of your salvation, you seek Him to be saved, for He's the only one that can save you this morning. He said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. If, if, if He's touching your heart this morning, He's seeking you to trust Him, why don't you seek Him to save you? And then this morning, scripturally seek Him. Seek Him in the Scriptures. Let seek Him through the, in the Word. Listen, rather than rather than than, than, than letting uh, uh, co-workers that don't know the Lord guide you, go to the Bible. What God? What will Thou have me to do? Amen. Seek Him in the Scriptures. And then let me say thirdly and last. Assembly seek Him. That is, seek Him in the church. Seek Him in the house of God. You know, the Bible says in verse 25 of Hebrews 10, to not, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. Listen, there's a great departing from the church. We're living in those in those days where where it's it's just easier, uh, it's more convenient uh, than to just get up and come to church. Hey, listen, this morning, let's make sure we're seeking Him as a as a body of believers in the house of God, seeking Him in the church. In First Timothy chapter three, it tells us that the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. And in Matthew chapter five, he tells us Jesus likens us. Those of us that know the Lord as a candle. And in Revelation chapter 1, he tells us that the candle, uh, the candle there, uh, the candlestick I should say, is the church. And this morning the candle goes in the candlestick. That is, those of us that know the Lord are supposed to be a part and, in, and involved in the local New Testament church. Make sure this morning that we don't allow the world to, to get us away from the uh, uh, assembling of the church. The body of believers. Church is important. Jesus died for the church. I'd say that's pretty important. He gave us this local body to be a part of. And this morning we want to make sure that, that, that we're not take, take, taking that lightly and slipping away from that. Listen this morning. Those who stay away, I, I've seen it happen many, many, many times. But those who begin to, 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 to fall away from the assembling of, uh, of the church, hey, listen, before long, other things begin to change in their life. The church, the, the, God has a purpose for the church. Stay involved in the church. Stay assembled in the church. And seek Him in the house of God. May I say this morning, many churches today aren't even seeking the Lord in their services. They're seeking other things but this morning at this church we want to seek him we want to seek the Lord and so I just want to encourage you this morning to seek him seek him your pursuit let it be that I'm seeking my Savior I'm seeking my God I'm going to seek him in the scriptures and I'm going to seek him when I come to church I'm going to seek the, the, the fellowship that He died to give me. I'm going to seek the freedoms that, I, that, that, that He has provided for me. Uh, I'm going to seek Him. 
Seek him while he may be found. Would you bow your heads, please, this morning? Our Father, I thank you for the word of God this morning. And I do pray, Lord Jesus, that we will seek you as a church and seek you personally and individually in our lives. That we will seek you in every area of our life. That we will search you out, Lord. that you may guide us and that we fulfill your purpose and plan. Lord, be glorified in this invitation, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand, please? If the Lord touched your heart this morning, the altar is open. If you'd like to come, you come this morning.